Um, we're going to start with um, Marcus Diamond, and he's uh, going to uh, present to us here. Thank you, Richard. Uh, good morning, everybody. I'm, I'm Marcus from Germany, and I, uh, you, you forgot to mention the university. Ah. Fern. 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 It's, it's Fern uh, University. It's a distance teaching university. It's not an open university because our gates are not so open than in other tra uh, open universities. And as Richard was um, already mentioning, this will be very interactive, so I will be most of the time I'm not speaking. Uh, but uh, we, we had um, a preparation in advance, um, which I will show you in a minute. So first, um, unfortunately, Joran uh, could not make it here. Um, we are, uh, we are uh, four people from Germany. Uh, Joran, uh, Sonja and Gabi are both, um, uh, all three are working in Hamburg at a, a small um, <coughs> company. And I'm from the Fan University uh, in Hagen in Germany. And uh, the title of the presentation is Won't Somebody Please Think of the Learners How to Overcome the Helen Lovejoy Syndrome of OER. And basically, then it's up to you to discuss this question. So um, what we're going to do is uh, it's an open space. Um, that's what, what this format is called. And so I did a little research. What is open? What, what does open space mean? So it's now you're, you're lucky and, and you're invited um, to focus on a specific important task or purpose, uh, which is to discuss this Helen Love Joy syndrome. And this will be done uh, uh, that I will uh, show, present a video which we produced in advance, uh, which explains everything. So for me, it's more easy because I can be quiet and uh, see you watching the video, and then um, we will discuss three uh, questions. Um, they are meant as suggestions, so you don't need to stick to them because we are all adults and, and, and uh, we are free to discuss all other questions as well, but uh, we thought that it would be good to focus on three, three questions, and the method then will be think for yourself, pair with somebody around you. So please make sure that there is somebody available next to you, which you can discuss with him or her. And then um, yeah, we, we will uh, all be happy to hear what you um, have come up with. So it's um, share. So it's think, pair, share, the method. And we also will use Twitter. Uh, so we have a back channel online uh, with a specific hashtag. And we, all, we also have uh, my colleagues in Germany um, uh, monitoring, um, <coughs> moderating the Twitter thing. And we uh, want also to um, provide a summary, a wrap up of the discussion. So we you can also use Twitter, and, and we will try to collect, because it's live recorded, we also try to collect the question, uh, the, the answers, and the suggestions, the ideas, and we will later provide a blog post or even a video. So I hope you're ready to, to, to kick off and, and to start this um, thing. And so without uh, further ado, uh, be ready for the video. Won't somebody please think of the children? This famous outcry by the Simpsons character Helen Lovejoy has become emblematic for situations in which adults pretend to think not of the children but for them, meaning patronizing them. There's also a Helen Lovejoy syndrome in open education. We tend to think not only of the learners but we intend to think for them. What do you mean when you say we? We? refers to educators and educational institutions that design and provide OER. We tend to think of learners as target groups, of learning as usage scenarios, and of motivation and interests as demands. That is okay and probably inevitable. It is quite impossible no, to not think of concrete instances of learning and types of learners when we create open educational resources. So, what's the problem? Well, this. Even the best designers and providers of OER simply cannot think of every possible learning situation in which their OER might be used. This would be a form of ignoring one of the basic ideas of open. It is up to the learners how to use OER. And thus, 
they might know more and know better than the providers what's good for them. It's somewhat, somewhat confusing. Not knowing about the learning context of OER is not a bug, it is a core feature of open education. Consequently, there is a paradox for us in designing and providing OER. We cannot not think of a concrete use of our materials. But we should also constantly remind ourselves that this is only a small representation of real-world learning situations. There are many unknowns out there that we simply cannot know about. And being aware of these unknowns and taking these into account, this is what we call untargeted openness. What is the meaning of untargeted openness? Untargeted openness means open for people and purposes that we cannot know about. So, in the context of open educational resources, for OER, it means a resource should also be open for people that we could not think of and purposes that we could not imagine. That's untargeted openness in the context of OER. Can you provide any examples? Well, it's easy when you look at Wikipedia. Wikipedia is a resource which is meant to address anyone for any purpose. Maybe. This is why it was not invented by a traditional institution in the educational system. Or think of YouTube videos. Many YouTubers provide educational videos that do not address a specific group. But more interesting are the examples that are not so clear. And that's the topic of our session on untargeted openness. And who the hell are you? You cannot know. I'm just watching your video. Hi, we are Gabi, Mira, Sonja and Markus. We want to explore the idea of untargeted openness together with you. In our session, we want to address questions of untargeted openness with explorative discussions and a collection of concrete examples and activities. We'll bring these two questions. First, can you share a story in which a resource was used by someone or for purposes that the creators of the resource did not imagine? Second, how can we provide openness also to those unknowns, unknowns individuals, unknown situations, unknown institutions, unknown context? We'd like to hear your answers. First, on site in Galway on April 11th. Second, and on Twitter. Please share your thoughts using the hashtag untargeted openness. See you. Bye. See you. Bye. <laughs> thank you. All right, thank you very much. And you saw I, um, I was even wearing the same jacket in order to make it more easy for you to recognize me. But I should. <laughs> and now I'm wearing the, the white uh, sh shoes. Uh, Try to. Okay. Uh, thanks for your applause. Um, so um, back to the business and to to, to the discussion. Uh, we um, would like to invite you to discuss three questions with your peers here in the lecture theater, which is not very suitable for a workshop, but we <coughs> try, want to try our best. And also online, I know you're. Uh, Many of, of you are here uh, are very active on Twitter, so please don't be shy and uh, share also your ideas and thoughts, whatever comes to your mind, using the hashtag Untargeted Openness or, and OER19. So, um, as I was mentioning, the method we will use is Think Pair Share. So, we watch the video together, and you probably and hopefully have some basic ideas. Of uh, what about uh, this uh, session, what we want to trans uh, tra <coughs> uh, transport uh, the idea, and then we will pair up with uh, colleagues here in the room, and then we will um, share our, because we all like the idea of sharing is caring, so we'll try to share um, our ideas here and on Twitter. So the first question is, have you ever produced OER without usage? and audience in mind. And I think you have uh, five minutes for that. 
So first you can uh, think for yourself, but also it would be great, great if you pair already up with somebody next to you. Uh, it doesn't uh, uh, necessarily only two, I mean two people, it can also be three or four, whatever uh, is suitable or comfortable for you. So please, and if there are any questions, don't be shy to ask the audience um, or, or me. Uh, so this is the, the first question. All right, sorry to interrupt, but uh, judging from the amount of volume, it seems to be a very good, lively um, discussion. Uh, we will have two more questions, but I would like to hear um, what you came up with, any ideas and thoughts, so, you know, the sharing culture thing, and we are at an OER conference, so who would be willing to share an answer or an idea or a comment or it could also be if you like the idea or the questions or if it's totally unrelevant for our field. So who wants to go first? Yes, please. Sorry. Uh, yeah, he is running up the hill. Oh, the, the. Hi, we felt very strongly that there's kind of no point in producing an OER if you haven't got a usage or an audience in mind. It kind of defeats the point somewhat. Okay. <coughs> there's immediately some replies or comments. Uh, yes, we agreed with that. Um, we thought of examples of creating uh, one experience of creating OERs that there, we always had an audience in mind, but sometimes had the experience of the audience who turned up after the design were, was not exactly the audience we planned for. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, and yes. Um, yeah, my immediate answer to that question was also no, but also bearing in mind and you know, strongly understanding that there's a difference between that question and um, has the usage of an OER you've produced always been that that you had originally in mind and very often the most significant usage of an OER that's been produced is not the one that was originally in mind. Yeah. All right, thank you very much. and. Uh, also, it's an, a close question, so you can either answer yes or no. I, I thank you for your elaboration <laughs> on it. Oh, it's, you want to, uh, sorry, no, please, please go ahead. Yeah, the, the three of us, we also kind of agreed with what everybody's been talking about, except we split a little bit in the two of us were, were kind of puzzled by the question because it was like, we found it difficult. How do you write without at least an implied audience? Uh, or, or viewer in mind, but then w one of us was actually talking about, well, they'd actually done a lot of writing and putting materials out on the web uh, as kind of a diary, as a note-taking. So in other words, they were just not writing for anybody other than to get it out of their own head. And then, it, but again, in all three cases, we all found, you know, like you, you mentioned, you know, unintended audiences finding use for it. Okay. Thank you. So let's keep discussing, let's keep thinking, and let's move on to the second question. Have you ever encountered examples when OER, that's related to the first, uh, when OER was not used as intended? And what happened? And uh, OER were not used for the purpose intended by the producers. And what happened there? And what, uh, what, 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 what did you think about it? So please, again, discuss with your peers. We have four to, uh, four to five minutes and we will collect the answers. Okay, in order to stick to the schedule because there are other, part uh, other speakers next to me, unfortunately I have to play the bad guy and interrupt the, the lively discussion, but please be sure to use Twitter it's 24-7 available, you can, you can um, <clears throat> every time you can um, share, share it. So um, just uh, would uh, again, uh, would be anybody willing to share comments, answers to this? 
Or we, well, should we go to Twitter? Richard, is there something interesting? Yeah, there's, there's a lot of good discussion on Twitter. <coughs> Okay, but there is also, yes, please. Hi, you have to excuse my voice, it's almost gone. So uh, when YouTube first started out, I was creating parody music videos based on, if they were history lessons, intended for history students and teachers studying world history. And uh, we had this massive um, feedback from different people, um, people learning English. Oh, we love that you put subtitles on them. That helps me learn English. People hard of hearing, same reason. But the best story was that one of my songs was ado adopted by a drag queen review. And they did this whole Bastille Day uh, celebration of Philadelphia and sang it, and someone sent it to me. So you never know what would happen if you just put stuff out there for people and who might use it. Thank you. All right. I think we move on to the final, to the third last final question. And uh, once again, I would like to motivate you to discuss this question. Have you ever been surprised by the use of OER because it did not take place in the context you had in mind or because it addressed a different target group? And also just say yes or no, but please specify. So the last question, here we go. Yes, uh, sorry folks, my uh, timekeeper Richard just gave me the, the signal, so I think there's no room for interpretation what this means. <laughs> so, uh, but I have, um, so thank you for your lively discussion. And yeah, once again, just to, to wrap it up, here is uh, the final slide. Uh, please make sure that um, you use uh, the, the, the hashtag untargeted openness, and there is also some good discussion on it. So thank you very much. Uh, it was a great pleasure for me, and also on behalf of my dear colleagues back in Germany, Joran, Gabi, and Sonja. It was a great pleasure to discuss with you, and uh, also do not hesitate to approach me to discuss other questions related to that or whatever you have in mind. So, uh, the, uh, and I hope that um, you are not out of energy for the next session, because um, it will be also very interactive. I hope there is motivation left to go on to the next session. So, Thank you very much.